seen. Uh, it's a, a privilege uh, to come and visit your center here. Uh, wish you good luck in this uh, uh, nicely flourishing uh, center here. And uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, uh, I do partly compare to intellectual history uh, and uh, Turkish education modernization too. Uh, the period that I spent some time, uh, a significant amount of time, is the period uh, when the uh, very initial important uh, Turkish educational modernization started up. I'm talking about Selim III uh, and his era. Uh, you know, classical period ended with the Selim, uh, Selim uh, third era and the modern period in education. And in terms of thinking about education, educational administration, uh, uh, started up, uh, and also theories and class system. Uh, you know, there are several aspects and you know, why uh, we can start the modern period in Turkish education uh, with the Selim the Third Era, and I'll give you all the evidences and reasons why. Uh, you know, that's the uh, turning point in Turkish history. But uh, in the meantime. Uh, we know it's called Nizam Jadid, uh, which means uh, new order. Uh, it's always uh, understood that new order only meant for the military. Yeah, of course, it's named after the military, that's true. But, you know, there was a tremendous uh, transformation uh, took place in the mentality of the empire with regard to the governance, with, with regard to supervision of the madrasas with regard to the appointment of madrasas, there are several factors, you know, and there is also a very concrete um, DEFTA register I, uh, you know, I discovered uh, somehow stumbled on I, I, as I was doing some research in the Başbakanlık uh, Arşivi, Arşivi, in the uh, Prime Minister archives, you know, of the Ottomans, there's a large uh, archive uh, based in Istanbul. A fairly interesting uh, register uh, contains like around 40 uh, waraks, 40 pages, uh, and uh, gives all the details of the madrasas, muderris, uh, and these uh, student names and their country of origin. Uh, very colorful uh, information and data as we, uh, you know, we, we gather. I have the sample and I'll uh, read through some certain sample, uh, samples uh, of, of this register and I'll explain you know, how this uh, register took place uh, as well. I'm going to use that as a, a fairly um, uh, convincing, uh, a, you know, concrete example with regard to the formation of modern state because we do have similar uh, registers uh, that uh, de you know dealt with about madrasas, madrasas, uh, and, and so on, so on. Previously, always there was a supervision, but the supervision always made by the uh, Sheikh Al Islam, the, 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 the supreme spiritual authority, uh, not necessarily directly by uh, the Sultan. You know, Sultan, for the first time, we see he initiated the process. Just you know, he order, he gave the orders and the Janissary Corps uh, went out and literally went to door to door, door uh, all the madrasas and checked out who is in the room or who is not. I'll give you all those the details. But uh, with regard to the you know, uh, educational thinking and, and educational uh, organization, uh, things uh, began to change dramatically. Uh, why, for instance, there was no class system uh, in, in the modern sense, uh, madrasas. There was it used to be only the levels. So, the levels is determined by the book and the uh, teacher, by the mudaris. But uh, with the establishment of the uh, uh, school of engineering, Mohandisani Berri Humayun, we observed that there is this uh, very first introduction of the class system in the first grade, second grade. Uh, I mean, sophomore or whatever. Uh, those kind of levels started up. And also uh, the printing, uh, using printing uh, machines in reproducing books, course books, right uh, below the uh, School of Engineering also t uh, took shape as well. Uh, and also, uh, for instance, uh, before uh, the uh, Selim era, there was a kind of a cold feet, uh, kind of a uh, you know, negative attitude towards learning foreign language. I'm talking about uh, Frank uh, language. You know, yeah, Frank means European language, you know. 
and at that time, the dominant language was French. And then, so, uh, you know, there was even, uh, uh, when we look up uh, the, uh, you know, Hussein was part of the uh, Ottoman intellectual history meetings and workshops we have done uh, a few years ago, Abu Sud, uh, Abu Sud's uh, fatwas, you know, his uh, religious decisions. When we, uh, we stumble on uh, a, a kind of a fatwa, something like this. This is from the classical period. I'm talking about 16th century. And he, he was asked, if uh, a person uh, wants to learn uh, Frank uh, European language on his desire, let's say uh, he wants to learn, uh, he wants to study Shakespeare in, in, in English, just based on his uh, personal interest, uh, his, his uh, marriage contract uh, would be still legal or not. <laughs> you know, Nikia, how do you share me? There was kind of an interesting question it was posed, but, and, but the question was loaded. It has a lot of meaning. So you can, <coughs> we can analyze uh, the, uh, the, the mentality, I mean, the, the, the loaded uh, meanings of these questions. Uh, people really were discussing in cafes that probably, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's okay to, that, you know, women can, uh, you know, <laughs> disregard the uh, contract because he's, he became kafir or whatever, you know, just losing his interest. But of course, uh, Abu Sud says it, not that extreme, you know, no, no way. Yeah, but he, wa he will be warned uh, seriously, and, but if he, if he insists to learn Frank language uh, and continuously, he will be punished by, you know, beating, whipping, and the, those kind of things. But so yeah, there is this kind of really cold feet and you know negative uh, attitude towards uh, learning European language, but uh, uh, with the Selim era we, we see the opposite, uh, and for the first time teaching French language, French language was uh, you know uh, designed to be included in part of the curriculum in the School of Engineering and several. Uh, books, of course, were translated from French and so on and so forth. I'm giving all those kind of uh, just general information to show how uh, certain things uh, was uh, dramatically changing. Why uh, this kind of uh, changes uh, start, uh, began to change? Because, uh, you know, Ottomans, uh, they already uh, were aware of some things needed to be changed since the early 18th uh, century but they never lost their confidence with their classical system of governance and education. Uh, you know, still it was there, you know, with the Yemsek, uh, you know, uh, Celebi uh, Mehmed the 28th, uh, who visited uh, Europe and made some reports about uh, what was going on. So, the, the, I mean, they, need, they felt the need to change things, but they said, uh, okay, if we, if we change those things uh, to, revamp to uh, strengthen our uh, classical governance and, and, and educational institutions. Uh, so uh, they didn't lose the confidence. And the, the other thing is they uh, were not, uh, uh, I mean, even the Europeans were not aware of what, what, you know, what kind of concrete outcomes they would come up with this whole uh, developments of the scientific revolutions and so on and so forth. Even the Europeans were not aware of what was going on, and also Ottomans were not aware. Yeah, this is kind of a, you know, uh, unclear consequence that uh, the uh, the modern period was marching towards. So it's you know uh, you know there are lots of uh, reasons why they uh, felt that way, but of course you know after 17, uh, 1775, a major loss with the Kuchuk uh, Narja. Uh, I'm talking giving some military reasons. Uh, and international uh, outcomes of uh, the, the period when they lost their confidence with the old uh, classical system. I'm talking about the ancien regime uh, of the Ottomans. So uh, with the 1774 and then later, uh, and following years, uh, Ottoman bureaucrats and elites, they realized that th things definitely need to be changed uh, dramatically. And then, uh, then we, we observe uh, the, uh, the rise of new order and so on and so forth. And uh, I'll give you another uh, very interesting development took place at the time when as soon as the Selim III uh, uh, came to power, uh, he, claim, uh, he called uh, a lot of bureaucrats, uh, a lot of intellectuals, uh, people from uh, learning class, people from military class, and people uh, from 
kalamiya, uh, from the bureaucracy, you know, uh, people with the pen, people with the knowledge, and people with the sword. <laughs> so there are three cl uh, class of people. And, and uh, re records show that more than uh, 200 uh, people participated in that uh, consultative meeting. It's called Meshweret. And this kind of meeting was, uh, uh, as it was unprecedented. I mean, there was always a uh, call for a uh, consultative meeting, but the, the large scale, uh, such a large scale uh, consultative meeting never took uh, place before. Uh, you know, seen, you, you correct me if, uh, if there's another uh, major, this kind of inclusive, you know, you know more than 200 people uh, or more uh, uh, participated in this meeting. And, and uh, basically the, the meeting uh, topic was nothing is working in the empire. You know, uh, we, we are facing several uh, problems in military, several problems uh, in economy, taxation, and so on and so forth. You know, the, the rise of feudal uh, lords uh, we, we observed during the uh, period, and uh, uh, s several problems with the madrasas too, because you know, modernists, the professors were not appointed in a uh, in a uh, uh, academically uh, oriented way. I mean, there are some kind of uh, nepotic relationship uh, was uh, going, uh, taking place in, in the appointment, and there was the, uh, the need, uh, and there was a need to develop uh, a much sound uh, sounder uh, curricula uh, and so on and so forth. I mean, there are lots of uh, issues that came up as well. So, uh, I mean, uh, lots of people uh, spoke, uh, discussed, uh, gave their suggestions how to reform the empire, and Selim III uh, asked everyone uh, to present their reports. Uh, and over 20 reports are presented to him. And so whatever the, uh, he, he wanted to, uh, whatever the uh, final conclusions based on all the, the decisions made by, uh, uh, suggestions made by this consultative meeting, everybody should follow all those, uh, you know, steps and so on and so forth. And um, uh, let me come to uh, the, uh, so this is what was taking, uh, taking uh, this uh, meeting took place in 1789. And the register that I'm talking about uh, took place uh, very in the very early uh, days of 1792, almost like three years later, two years later, uh, two and a half years later. And uh, this register uh, is, is uh, talking about, uh, you know, uh, there are, we, are we, we kept observing that there are, yeah, Sitani, let me read uh, just a very initial uh, words uh, in Turkish and I'll translate. Asitani Aliye ve Havalisinde Bila Kefil Başı Boş ve Serseri Makulesi Meçhulü Ehval Ki Mesnelerin Tart ve Defi and so on and so forth. Yeah, I mean, uh, now we begin to uh, observe that in the city of Istanbul, uh, several, uh, you know, uh, uh, <laughs> uh, how are we going to say this? <laughs> kind of, uh, 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 ah, riffraff. <laughs> okay. I mean, um, um, was it, there was an interesting uh, New York term that uh, didn't come to my mind. Uh, anyway, anyhow, uh, people, uh, you know, uh, People who doesn't have a job uh, and just hang, uh, hang, hangs around everywhere, uh, you know, uh, basically uh, uh, jobless people, but with the bad attitudes, and they, they drink he, uh, here and there, and they stay uh, wherever they find places empty, and apparently those kind of people uh, uh, manage to infiltrate certain madrasas too, and and. And uh, uh, there's a very interesting uh, long uh, introduction in the uh, documents here. It talks about, and also, Yobazat uh, Taifesi is a very interesting term, which is very modern too. Uh, you know, Yobazat is religious fanatics, uh, religious lunatics, uh, religious zealots, you know, totally, uh, you know, blinded, you know, and absolutely narrow minded and reactionary type of people also managed to uh, 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 infiltrate it, uh, uh, penetrated to these um, uh, madrasas, these schools of ed uh, ed education at a higher level. So uh, the, uh, the idea was 
to cleanse uh, these uh, education institutions from these kind of uh, people. But some of them would be uh, uh, medical students too, but some of them may not. And, and the uh, order came uh, from the Sultan and uh, is not initiated by the uh, Sheikh Islam. Uh, the Sultan uh, order uh, commanded the thing. So it's a kind of a, a, a change. I'll, uh, and I'll explain, uh, I'll give my hypothesis based on the, the, the uh, uh, information I, I gather here. And also uh, here, uh, for instance, Sultan uh, over here, it says, you know, Madrasi Beyaz Sultan Beyaz Veli, Ders Vekili, Hoca Hasan Efendi. So it gives the uh, all this uh, medicine's name, and also who is the uh, you know uh, professors, who is the medaris, the uh, top uh, uh, teacher uh, in that particular place. And then over here it gives uh, the uh, they go through uh, all the doors. You know, how many rooms exist in the medicine? Uh, they say ten, twelve, one, whatever. And then it gives Sahibi uh, Hujre. Burusavi Muzaf Osman Efendi. So he gives the person's name and the, uh, and the country of health is origin, where, where he comes from. Uh, and over here, for instance, uh, I'll, I'll give you colorful information. So this is this is from Bursa, from Marmara region. Sahibi Hujre Filibeli Ali Efendi. He comes all the way from Balkans, Filibeli. And uh, this one, Sahibi Hujre Balati Ibrahim Efendi. So he, he comes from the city from Balat inside the city. Sahibi Hüce, Menteşeli, and so on and so forth from the Aegean uh, place. And this guy, Sahibi Hüce, Canikli, Seyyid Hasan Efendi. So he comes from Black Sea uh, region. And uh, this one, Sahibi Hüce, Krimi Ömer Efendi. He comes all the way from, you know, Crimea, yeah, next to Georgia. So very interesting information. Yeah, there are lots of uh, information uh, like this. And uh, I'll give you uh, my concluding observation based on the data. Uh, and uh, what do we, uh, let me see here. Uh, I'll give you uh, the number of, uh, number of madrasas exist inside uh, Istanbul and um, number of um, uh, madrasas, the rooms, and the number of students. I'll give you the total numbers at the end. Uh, but I'm going to give you, uh, I'm, I'm uh, making some connections uh, with the date of this register with an interesting uh, uh, assassination uh, attempt took place uh, just a month before uh, this register. Uh, I need to hypothetically, uh, this is a hypothesis, but I need to you know, verify uh, the hypothesis that I'm talking about. I think uh, the assassination uh, uh, attempt was uh, made against the Sultan for the first time, probably. I've never encountered uh, anyone else. I mean, in terms of uh, someone from, uh, uh, from the public attempt to kill, uh, assassinate uh, the Sultan when he was praying. So this, this took place in, uh, in, in, uh, in Juma time and he was praying in his uh, place. And uh, the, um, uh, this is something I found is, my, is merely uh, in the diaries uh, and uh, his uh, uh, very close associate that uh, took all the details, in, an Arab person, uh, not Arab person, no, no. Anyway, I'll, 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 I need to look into those uh, details in terms of the, the way they, uh, they describe the person. Uh, someone from the public, uh, uh, when we were praying, used a musket and he, uh, and he shot three shells uh, and went through the, just above the Sultan and he got extremely uh, scared and all his uh, guards uh, jumped on him and put him down uh, just to uh, save his life and so on and so forth. It was a tremendous, it was a very uh, discreet, uh, very, very detailed uh, illustration of the assassination uh, took place at that time. So uh, this was at uh, the end of uh, 1991, somewhere in the first weeks of like uh, 12 or 13th of December. Uh, and this register took place 
towards the end of like 23rd uh, of January 1792. And I believe, I mean, it's just uh, is a repercussion uh, of this, uh, you know, assassination attempt. He wanted to uh, make a direct surveillance and control and uh, literally uh, uh, extend the state discipline to towards uh, these uh, madrasas uh, as well, because uh, those madrasas, uh, you know, b based on the Behij Efendi's report and several others, we see that, uh, you know, there are there were there, used, there were some decent madrasas, but there was uh, some madrasas they did not provide any education at all. I mean, just jobless people, uh, people who, get, who hang around. Uh, they uh, because it's they have a free stay, free food, and uh, free room, and so and they. Uh, you know, infiltrated uh, those kind of places. And, uh, you know, this is something uh, I need to uh, find out. Uh, let me ask you, Hussein, do, do you remember uh, any other sultan before Sultan Selim who were, uh, there was a kind of a, a assassination attempt made towards them? I don't know, right? I mean, it's so, uh, I think it, it's also indication of, uh, you know, uh, uh, this uh, uh, thing as well. And um, uh, yeah, the, in terms of the psychological atmosphere, there is the atmosphere of the empire was kind of uh, convenient to uh, uh, to uh, have this kind of assassination attempt. To what I'm talking is, uh, Ottomans lost tremendous wars uh, towards Russia in 1774, and then uh, the Ottomans uh, attempted to regain because they lost Crimea. They wanted to re re uh, recapture Crimea because 90% of the population were Muslims. Uh, it was a, a tremendous blow among, uh, against the Ottoman Asabiyya, the sense of unity and the uh, uh, their sense of perce self perception. And, and 17, uh, 1791, uh, that attempt also en ended another blow. So it's a kind of a tremendous f uh, f uh, feeling of fa uh, failure. Uh, that would they might have triggered this kind of uh, assassination attempt by uh, the uh, public. Uh, so that's something I should share as well. But uh, with this register, what, what we observe is that uh, madrasas in Istanbul, uh, there are in Istanbul, in Nefsi Istanbul, in Istanbul, in all this city, inside the city, uh, there are, uh, hun there were, 159 madrasas, 159 madrasas, and with uh, 1,833 rooms, uh, all the rooms are calculated, and uh, with 2,599 students. And uh, Eyüp, Galata, and Üsküdar, they were, uh, they were considered outside of Istanbul. They, they were, they, the numbers were given separately. Ayyub, there, there were eight madrasas with 75 rooms, and with uh, and, oh, they have uh, and they housed 78 students. In Galata, for instance, we we, cons we think that uh, in Galata neighborhood, uh, there you know there were uh, non-Muslim majority and few Muslims around, but they had madrasas, a number of madrasas over there, and you know, five, so you know, uh, and six, uh, five uh, important madrasas and with 59 uh, rooms, and they had 61 students over there. Almost, you know, a little bit less than Eyüp. And Üsküdar, for instance, the very first uh, town that the uh, Ottoman Turks landed uh, way back, uh, they had uh, seven uh, madrasas with 79 uh, rooms, and they had, but the number of students were just uh, a few, 59 rooms. Uh, 59 students. They they have 79 madrasas, but the number of students are very much less. So they have like 20 rooms empty. And uh, when I look through all the details and uh, this register, uh, I, I see there are madrasas with 15 or 20 rooms, but much fewer uh, with two students, sometimes with three students. So. Uh, in other words, uh, all the reports presented to uh, Selim, uh, the, uh, Selim the third period, uh, right after the consultation uh, uh, meeting, 
uh, they were talk talking about there was a, uh, lots of students uh, uh, were not interested in learning and education. There was a tremendous disinterest in madrasas and so on and so forth. And, uh, and they w were giving some ideas how to encourage students to learn more and uh, to receive further education. And uh, this kind of numbers pretty much corresponds with uh, those reports you know, you know, and it verifies them. So the total number of uh, madrasas overall uh, in, inside the old city, Istanbul, inclu including Eyüp, uh, Galata, and Üsküdar, total number is 179 madrasas. And uh, they had uh, they had 2,046 uh, rooms, and the total number of students in these madrasas were uh, 2,000, you know, 2,797 uh, students, a little bit less than 3,000 students. So when we consider about the population of Istanbul uh, in the late 18th century, with around 200,000. So almost 1% uh, uh, of the population uh, were uh, uh, benefiting from education in higher level, in a higher level like we're talking about. Of course, uh, the number of, uh, you know, fairly Sibyan schools we are talking about, you know, elementary schools, uh, they were much widespread. You know, uh, that's, just, that's something different. So, uh, as I said, uh, there were uh, this is kind of striking uh, num uh, number of medrasas uh, shows that there were uh, medrasas with two rooms with one student, medrasas with uh, ten rooms, uh, also four students. Very interesting uh, figures uh, we are observing here. And also, uh, over here, uh, uh, here, there's uh, an interesting uh, note uh, just to uh, share uh, with you. Cümlesi uh, birbirlerine kefil olmuştur. You know, they asked always uh, one another whether you are weren't of the of your friends. You know, everybody were kefil. They warranted one another. Okay, he's a good guy. He's a student. You know, I, I, you know, I uh, verify that he's surely uh, declared that he's a student. So, but there were uh, some uh, people uh, who did not receive that kefil, uh, and they were kicked out uh, immediately. Uh, all his belongings were put outside. Uh, I would say, uh, you know, the total number of those uh, uh, people, that we can't call them students, uh, were, uh, who were kicked out uh, were like uh, around 20 uh, out of uh, uh, 20, yeah, I would say, uh, you know, 20 out of 2,000 something, almost, uh, right, 1%? Yeah, almost 1% is fairly uh, small. And uh, over here, sometimes uh, you see an interesting remark here. Uh, total number of nefer, the number of people, uh, not necessarily students, because they also uh, recorded uh, custodians too, Farash. You know, bevab, you know, and they uh, give those kind of definitions. Uh, eight and there, uh, two uh, two people were missing, and they say tashrada. Uh, they are visiting. Uh, they are in the countryside, or silada. They are visiting their parents. E either they had a duty or something. You know, they, they give those kind of detailed information. I mean, the thing is, uh, th this kind of, um, you know, I looked through the other registers, uh, uh, you know, not all of them, but uh, uh, pretty much like around uh, 10, 12. Uh, this kind of supervision is made by Sheikh Islam, but not in this meticulous and detailed way. And this one, uh, you can get the sense that the, uh, you know, uh, the state is trying to accumulate some data. Uh, exactly the number of students, the origins of the st uh, professors, the origin of uh, you know uh, students and professors and all those kind of things. You know, kind of statistic, state and statistics. You know how <laughs> you know Atomus is trying to uh, use uh, and and uh, you know adjust into those kind of uh, notions. Anyway, uh, okay. Uh, let me uh, share uh, with you my uh, the working hypothesis that I, that I have. Uh, these documents, 
uh, as well as uh, several others. You know, because I look through some of the uh, Fermans, the, the uh, uh, imperial uh, decrees as well, verify uh, that the reports presented to uh, verify <coughs> the outcomes. Basically, the reports presented to uh, Selim the uh, Third that. Uh, complain about the decadence in medrasa education, how students were disinterested in learning and education, and how certain medrasas were struggling to find motivated students to teach. You know, pretty much correspond, uh, mentioned that. Second, the emergence of the cold face of the modern state, i.e., uh, uh, to show everyone uh, to realize who is in charge and can control and supervise anything and everything, including especially medicines, the bedrock of the uh, you know Elmia class, because you, you know uh, it, it was done uh, through Sheikh Islam, the spiritual authority, but you know the state got into the game and uses all the uh, uh, you know military force or uh, police uh, force uh, to uh, see the uh, process and. And also, uh, we, we, when we, uh, we we observe this the, the cold face of the state, with the way the registry is uh, is formulated and is is taken, you know, uh, lots of uh, interesting uh, uh, data over there. And the other one is uh, state uh, the state autonomous state gets involved closely with it, madrasa education, aiming to centralize supervision. Uh, and surveillance and control over them, uh, not only administrative control, but also the way uh, professors, uh, the modernists, were also appointed. Not only uh, control uh, this physical uh, uh, area, but also the way uh, the modernists also were appointed too. Because Selim III in some other uh, decrees said, no, no modernist, no uh, professor will be appointed unless uh, asked, uh, uh, unless granted by me, because uh, certain uh, modernist uh, uh, position were given to uh, small children just because their fathers were modernists or professors. You know, there's this uh, practice uh, of you know basic ulama, the uh, the scholar of the cradle. It, it, it's called. I mean. Uh, it, 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 initially, they were very few, but uh, in the uh, Rashid Tarihi and others, we observed that in other, also other registers, uh, people who got into the exams, the number uh, increased to almost 30%, who, uh, you know, in terms of, uh, you know, getting those kind of positions. And uh, Selim literally said, you know, um, I saw several records. You know, uh, he should get into the exam first, and I don't care, uh, uh, you know, whether his father was, uh, you know, he comes from the uh, uh, Mullah Fenari family or uh, Tashkir Prizal, I don't care. I mean, he got into the exam. If he, uh, if he succeeds, then he'll get appointed. The other uh, hypothesis I, I have in front of me is that Selim III wanted to distance himself and the state authority from Ilmiye class especially from Sheikh Islam office to demonstrate uh, his independency and to prove that Sheikh Islam is one of the uh, one of his subjects uh, because you know there was a very uh, close intimate relationship between the sultan and Sheikh Islam and uh, sultan always respected Sheikh Islam office uh, Sheikh Islam himself and uh, when Sheikh Islam enters uh, the uh, convention, I mean the, uh, the consultative meeting, uh, Sultan always used to stand up and greet him. Uh, but was, that kind of relationship from the classical period began to fade away. Uh, I, I conclude that you know uh, I'm in charge, you are my subject. You know that that kind of relationship, you know, which is the uh, one of the. Uh, characteristic of the rise of the modern state in the Ottomans. The other one is uh, the state wanted to know certain <coughs> statistics of medrasas in its capital. I'm talking about, i.e., the number of medrasas, uh, the rooms, number of medrasas, number of students, their country of origins, uh, the medrasas with the problems, uh, the, the, you know, uh, the problems uh, uh, where uh, there's no education or miseducation and so on and so forth, which is uh, pretty much the beginning of surveillance, provision, and control by the state. 
And the other one is uh, the fifth one, a uh, striking way of using certain uh, concepts uh, or conceptions such as yobazat taifesi, yobazat makulesi, uh, and so on and so forth. I mean, uh, so uh, uh, in the register confirms that the, uh, the gap between the state uh, aimed to create between its ruler and its subjects uh, and also this uh, hypothesis corresponds pretty much uh, with, with number uh, uh, two and three hypotheses I'm talking about. So, but the, the you know, I mean, these are very new conceptions. Uh, I'm also working hard uh, to uh, trace uh, if this similar type of uh, notions or conceptions used before. But Yobazat, uh, you know, very uh, strongly uh, used in this document uh, for the first time I appear, and and these are very modern conceptions, which means you know, religiously backward you know, uh, fanatics, uh, religious lunatics, uh, reactionary type of people, and and still these notions have uh, repercussions <laughs> in today's Turkey too. Yeah, his his yobas, you know, his his <laughs> yobas. So these kind of uh, notions uh, we. Uh, inherit probably they, they come from uh, uh, from this period. The last one, uh, Mudaris and professors predominantly come from Anatolia, Balkans, and Caucasus, not from Syria uh, and uh, or Iraq or Egypt is interesting, uh, uh, which indicates that the common language of instruction was in, uh, in Turkish, although Turk textbooks were in Arabic. So uh, I looked through all the uh, origins of the professors and Mudaris and these uh, students. Uh, uh, all the, uh, I mean, I haven't finished the, uh, uh, you know, reading all the details of the students because uh, there are some uh, place names that I couldn't figure. <laughs> God knows where they are located. Uh, so I, 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 I can't uh, say any conclusive remarks with the students, but. For, as far as the uh, professors uh, Mederis are concerned, uh, out of this 180 uh, nearly, 179 uh, Mederis, uh, almost uh, all of them, they come from Balkans, Anatolia, and Caucasus. So which indi indicate that, the, uh, right, the, because the language of instruction in these Mederis were uh, Turkish, uh, the, the common language in these regions are Turkish as well. So, uh, you know, uh, but, but the, uh, uh, the textbooks were all in Arabic, uh, so it pretty much corresponds uh, with uh, this kind of findings. Um, maybe I should stop here if you have uh, more uh, questions and anything else you would like to discuss, uh, uh, and we can entertain uh, more, uh, but uh, this is uh, pretty much what I, uh, I needed to say. Uh, and uh, yeah, I should stop here, probably. Thank you. Uh, okay.